Hello, hello, this is Joe with Nerd in Korea. We are doing another budget deck tech. This time we're looking at Karth the Lion. I'm calling this a cat's friends because he pretends to be a lion. He's not a lion, he's a liar. That's what he is, yeah. He's a human, you can see, anyway. Karth the Lion is two Golgari, so uh, black green. And he's a 3-5, so that is his color identity. There's no other like sneaky little uh, things in his text box making him another thing. He's Golgari. Whenever Karth the Lion enters the battlefield, or a planeswalker you control dies. That's a big or. Look at the top seven cards of your library. You may re reveal a planeswalker card from among them and put it into your hand. So. Anytime he enters, you're going to go search out a Planeswalker. Planeswalker dies, go search out a Planeswalker. And there's a uh, plenty, I believe there's what, is it 19 Planeswalkers? So in seven cards, if you're not able to find a Planeswalker, that would be weird. Really, it's statistically unlikely, but yeah. Also, I think you can probably have a fairly good chance of hitting a particular Planeswalker. Maybe Garrick. Anyway. You may reveal a uh, ba ba ba. Put the rest of the bottom of your library in a random order. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Okay, so here's the other reason why he's amazing. Um, Planeswalker loyalty abilities you activate cost an additional plus one to activate. When they say cost, you might think that sounds bad. It's not, that's a bonus, okay? The plus one is one extra loyalty counter or a plus one to whatever. Even those minus abilities, they get plus one. So if it's minus two, it's only minus one. On a lot of things, usually you can activate those loyalty abilities twice with minus two, and then this will be five times. If it has five loyalty and yeah, it's two per, I should explain myself first, but anyway, I'm getting a little too excited about this one. Okay, with abilities like that, you think this is, uh, you know, kind of the creme de la creme? Not really. He has just over 3,000 decks on EDH rec, which isn't bad, but he's ranked number two on uh, Planeswalker Commanders. Um, number two, it can have much lower, but a lot of times you're looking at a much, much higher. So um, that's not a lot, I would say, considering his abilities, I think it's quite low. Um, I think there are ones that are over 10,000 decks. So some have like a really huge number, uh, that makes this kind of look like nothing. Um, the reason why he's so low, though, I think it's just Golgari, right? The commanders, or the commanders, bleh, I keep doing that. The planeswalkers, the planeswalkers available in Golgari are much more limited. I think if he was like a Jeskai commander, had the same things, like, uh, uh, yeah, <clears throat> red, blue, white, had the same abilities, this would be like the number one commander for uh, planeswalkers anywhere. Um, and even that searching out a uh, creature or a planeswalker, if a planeswalker dies, that to me feels much more like Demir than it does uh, Golgari ability, but maybe I'm overthinking it at this point. Anywho, I just a really solid choice despite not having maybe the following he should have. Okay, let's look at the themes and sub themes. So, main theme, Planeswalker typo, yep. Sub themes, okay, this is where I started making some choices. Um, proliferate, so I wanna talk about proliferate first because one thing that you might be a little confused about is uh, loyalty abilities get plus one. Not every time you get a loyalty counter, you get one extra. It's not that, right? So if you proliferate, you can proliferate and add one loyalty counter to anything that has a counter already, or you can add any, counters to anything that already has it in a counter or add another counter of that type and then yeah with this though you can put one more counter on and his ability isn't going to affect that at all right so it's still great to have but it doesn't like it's not going to completely uh unfortunately his ability doesn't work with proliferate there's really no effect there tokens okay We've got lots of token making and you want to have a lot of like blocking ability as well. 
Creatures you can just throw away are also very nice because you don't have to worry much about board wipes and things like that. So tokens are a really good fit with Planeswalkers. Plus one, plus one counters, just to get that extra juice as well. We've got so much pro proliferate, we might as well take extra advantage of that, right? And this will co go into some, uh, you know, um, win cons. Finally, Infect. Speaking of win cons, Infect, okay? We don't have a whole lot of Infect in here. There's only two cards that do Infect counters. And then after that, you're just going to have to like proliferate. Proliferating nine times sounds like a lot. You will not do it in one turn, I think. In two turns, definitely, especially if there's uh, like Frank Horrigan or something is on the battlefield, him attacking twice is already four times you proliferated, right? That's when it starts to get pretty reasonable. You got to do five more proliferates. Still sounds like a lot, but it's going to be easy. Okay, so the deck price on this is $49.92, so I just squeaked it in under $50. Even I was changing things kind of last minute, being like, oh, I forgot, you know, a couple of important lands and things like that. When I was doing up my uh, presentation for this, I realized, like, I should have this and this, and I was moving things around, and I almost went over the 50 again. So, keeping it under was not easy. Design objective, take maximum advantage of the extra loyalty counter. That's really what I'm focusing on here. His like planeswalker death trigger thing, that's going to go off no matter what. You don't really have to do a lot to build off of that. I don't know how you would build off of that even. But anyway, it's... Um, <clears throat> yeah, the loyalty counter thing is just so abusable. Um, so many planeswalkers are really built with exactly that kind of like that um, increase or decrease in mind where you know it's you, it's going to be on the battlefield for like three turns before you can use this ultimate or if it's uh one of those zero ones taking it down again if it starts with five loyalty it costs two to activate its ability you get to use that ability twice and then it's just kind of sitting there with this commander though, those zero abilities become plus one abilities and those minus two abilities become minus one. So you can activate his main ability that is usually zero. It's actually gonna bump him up one and then you can minus all the way down, right? So he's gonna go from five to seven and then you can use his minus seven times instead of two times. Um, really changes the math, that plus one throws things off pretty severely. Anyway, you can check this deck description on moxfield.com. I put the link in the description, so check that out. Part one, Karth Alliance. We're gonna talk about the commander here. I already read him off, so just as a quick review. Again, he is two and then black green Golgari for a three, five. It's okay. Once again, he is an unusual commander for Golgari. Um, I think Golgari is one of the strongest dual colors uh, pairs, but um, he's a weird one for Golgari. His death trigger searching out a planeswalker feels more like a blue ability. That's what I said before too. I guess I wrote this as well, so it's not that weird that I agree with myself, but anyway. Getting extra plus one on loyalty for your commanders can ma massively affect the timing of the abilities. Yeah, the kind of like economy that they planned on the card kind of just goes out the window as soon as you're adding plus one to things. Uh, a lot of things, it may not sound like a big difference. If you, if, even when you're talking about like a minus seven becoming minus six, you think, oh, that's not that big a difference. But when you're like, okay, okay, I'm going plus two instead of plus one, to get them, get them up, and then it costs less. Um, just yeah, really goes off much quicker than uh, I think people might realize a plus one does. High synergy cards. Okay, first up, the Paragon Dynamo. Um, I really like this card. This is another one of those cards where I was like, I saw it and I was like, I I gotta find a deck for that one. Um, I really like, I like that one. Okay, so it is three mana for an artifact creature, colorless, for a 1-5 with haste, which is not bad. Really, three for a 1-5 with haste? I would not complain about that. And you can pay one mana and tap them to 
copy target activated or triggered ability you control from another legendary source that's not a commander. Not a commander, unfortunately. You may choose new top targets for the copy. Okay, so basically, not all of the Planeswalkers are legendary, so that's something you do need to watch. But yeah, a good number, I would guess over half of them are legendary. I didn't actually sit down and count, I probably should have, but this is going to trigger also off of like any legendary creatures um except for your commander unfortunately it's also going to be able to like give you an extra trigger of that the extra trigger or making a double ability go off unfortunately for planeswalkers does not mean you're going to get another loyalty counter right so if it's plus one uh karth is going to make a plus two but you get plus two and that's it you don't get plus two twice because you're activating the, the ability twice so that's an important thing to keep in mind. Um, a lot of these abilities get really out of control. Like Gar one of the Garruks can make wolves, like two to wolves, and he'll do two per activation. So with one activation and one mana, this tapping, you got four wolves. And when those wolves die, they put a loyalty counter on each Garruk. So if so you do that and someone plays a board wipe, your Garruks are like in ultimate territory already. Evolution Sage. Okay, so this is like a staple in any kind of green proliferate deck. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, proliferate. We do have a nice amount of ramp in this as well. So you're going to be able to set this off pretty quickly and easily. Um, that, um, that proliferate trigger can go off multiple times. It's not based on the number of abilities, it's just land entering, right? So even if you have something that makes two lands enter, that's two times. Um, Nissa World Awakers Ultimate is take basically all of your basic lands out of your deck, throw them into the battlefield. So any other um, Planeswalkers you have, including her, I guess, that are on the battlefield, when you activate that, they're going to be um, getting a pretty massive boost. What is it? I think it's... Is it 17 basic lands in this deck? So if they... I mean, you probably played uh, some basic lands already, but even if it's like 15, that's more than enough for every Planeswalker you have to ultimate off of, right? So yeah, that's just a really crazy interaction. Palazzo Archers. Okay, this is a newer one. I love this card. Um, I actually picked up these for a fr some friends of mine. Two and a green for a two, three with reach. Okay. Reach is nice to have because like we don't like flyers, especially with planeswalkers. Flyers are annoying. Um, whenever a, a creature with flying attacks you or a planeswalker you control, Palazzo Archer deals damage equal to its power to that creature. Once again, when it attacks, not when it does damage, when it attacks. So if it Palazzo Archer's damage is high enough to take that a creature out, it would be gone. Basically, any uh any uh, flyers that don't have enough uh, like uh, toughness to survive it, they're going to go attack somewhere else instead of you or your planeswalkers. Um, keep in mind, we also have plenty of plus one plus one counters and uh, all and the uh, proliferate in this deck. So these are not going to stay two threes. They're going to be three fours, uh, four fives, blah 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 blah. Pretty quick, they're going to be like, even dragons probably don't want to swing at you kind of thing. Because they'll just be dropping automatically. It's a very nice little ability, that's for sure. Underrated. <clears throat> and f next up is Liliana's Talent for two black. So we finally have a black one. Enchantment Aura, Enchant Planeswalker. Yay! Enchanted Planeswalker has minus eight. Put all creature cards from all graveyards on the battlefield under your control. I actually don't have this as a win con because it's somewhat situational, but still, you, even if it's like mid game, mid to late game, if you set this off, you're probably just taking the game away, right? Um, if there's even been like two ward wipes, you can probably just like nab everything and like take over the board. You're gonna flood the board with this. Uh, crazy. Whenever a creature deals damage to Enchanted Planeswalker, destroy that creature. So any, any creature that actually does get through and damage your Planeswalker, gone. Um, 
Uh, yeah. Just uh, insanely good, both defensively and offensively. Just like, um, keep in mind, casting this is not set off the graveyard thing. The loyalty counter is set off this graveyard thing. So you're going to be able to like probably do this whenever you want and you will find a good time to use this. Garrett Cursed Huntsman. Okay, four Golgari, so six CMC altogether. Um, hi, a legendary Planeswalker. Garrick, yeah? Again, this is what I was talking about before. He has zero, right? Zero. Which usually is just kind of like, it's there, you don't really care. With Karth, that's plus one. Create two, 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 black and green wolf creature tokens with when this creature dies, put a loyalty counter on each Garak you control. So if you've got Garak Curse Hunter, we've also got, um, what is it called? Garak's, uh, not, is it Pack Leader? I, I'm asking you. Um, you can't respond, you're on YouTube. Um, anyway, we've got a creature where if it does damage, you can automatically look at, like the top four cards and take out a Garak, and also anytime a creature or a planeswalker so anytime a planeswalker dies you're going to be looking at the top seven taking one planeswalker out so if you can keep just taking out those uh, Garaks, you can really take huge advantage of this right um but yeah every time it die the one of those dies it gets a plus all the Garaks would get a plus one counter remember uh Kara's ability does not affect that all right so they are getting a loyalty counter. They're not getting two from Karth. No, too bad. Anyway, for minus three, minus two, we should say, destroy target creature, draw a card. That's really a nice little thing, right? Usually with this guy, you're able to set that off once and then hope a wolf dies and you can do it again. And then he'd be gone. Um, this is like, change again, that changes the economy to like, Immediately you could do it twice and he'll be down to two and then uh, you can probably set it off again later with all your pro proliferate and stuff like that or wolves dying and stuff and minus six Okay, this is where it gets really out of hand because remember activate his wolf ability once and you're already into the, the territory You can do this or if you just proliferate twice you can do this You get an emblem with creatures you control get plus three plus three and have trample Plus three, plus three, and trample. Really? Cast them. Proliferate twice? Everything. All of your creatures, plus three, plus three, and trample. Who cares if they're like little 2-2 two, two wolves or 2-2 two, two tokens? Like, that's going to be a 5-5 five, five with trample immediately. <sighs> also, the destroying a creature removal is very important with the Planeswalker deck because you want to keep taking out problematic creatures are going to keep just popping up and you got to keep like taking them out of the board as fast as possible. Card draw is nice too. Okay, last up here, Agent Frank Horrigan for five black green. Okay, seven. That's a higher casting cost than I usually like to put in, but, or I shouldn't say usually, I often like to put in, but he is trample, a trample eight, six. Okay, that's not bad. And he has indestructible as long as he, it attacked this turn. Okay, so if he attacks, immediately becomes indestructible until end of turn. So he's an indestructible trample creature in 8-6, starting 8-6. We're going to be putting plus one, plus one counters on him too, right? And then just proliferating those. And uh, yeah, he's going to end up being this huge indestructible attack monster. And every time he attacks, or sorry, whenever he enters the battlefield or attacks... Proliferate twice. Again, like the Garrick, if you can cast Garrick and then him on the same turn, okay, you've done it. Uh, Garrick can ultimate already. Um, woo. Nice. Part two, the plan. So these are the deck objectives, all right? Look at that kind of the, how to play it and how to win. As always, number one, ramp. Yep, ramp a -roo. Proliferate. So I'd say get some of your prol proliferate at least set up so that when you play the planeswalkers, you could just go, right? 
a lot of it is better to have already ready when uh, your uh, planeswalkers come in. And then finally, win cons. Okay, so ramp. Trail Tracker Scout. Okay, this is just like the best new card, I think, in a long, long time. It's um, any deck with green, I'm just putting this in automatically, basically. Um, this is going on my pre-con upgrades for sure. Uh, I'm doing that, I think, in four weeks. I'll probably do the green one, but anyway. Uh, one and a green for a 1-3. Tap, add one mana of any color. So your mana, kind of your standard mana dork, it's nice, he has a bit higher toughness than maybe might be common, but whenever you expend eight, okay, expend eight just me means use eight mana. If you use eight mana in a turn, boom, extend eight, done. Or expend, not extend, but. Return up to one target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. So just recursion, automatic recursion for just like casting spells, right? Just. Basically, you're, if you do anything and cast like Agent Frank Horrigan, you're probably already going to be at that um, expending 8 thing. Boom, you just take whatever permanent you want out of your graveyard and throw it straight back into your hand. Insane. And he's a mana dork. Black Market. This is crazy in this deck, okay? Whenever a creature dies, again, a creature dies, not you, a creature you control, just anywhere on the board, right? Any creature dies, put a charge counter on black market. Counter, charge counter. That word right there, counter, that's important. Every time you proliferate, you can add another counter to this, right? So it's gonna be throwing counters on itself really pretty quickly, probably, and you're just gonna proliferate and keep throwing them on there. Um, so at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, add a black mana for each charge counter on black market. That's gonna get completely out of hand very, very quickly, okay? Even if only one creature dies, um, which I think is not likely, especially with this deck, um, you're going to just proliferate, right? And then you're just gonna keep throwing them on there. And even by the second turn, this is on there, it's going to just be like a fairly decent chunk of mana. And if it's on there for like three turns, someone's going to have to remove it. Someone's going to have to use some kind of removal because you're just going to have like this mass of mana coming every pre-combat main phase. That's going to really just tilt the whole game, I think. Astral Cornucopia. Okay, this is in any proliferate deck, this is another one I always want to put in. Um, so X, 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 again, so you for every three you pay, play, um, it gets one charge counter, basically. So it enters the battlefield with X charge counters on it. Yep. So again, if you pay nine, divide by three, that's three charge counters. Okay. Tap, choose a color. Add one mana of that color for each charge counter on the Astral Cornucopia. First of all, very good to begin with, but even if you cast it for three, you can tap to add one mana of any color, which is pretty standard. But also, every time you proliferate, you're just going to keep throwing those charge counters down. You're going to increase that to the point where, again, if someone doesn't remove it, it's uh, just going to like win the game for you. Or it's going to be a pretty huge advantage, to say the least. Uh, we also have, what is it, Everflowing Chalice, which is a really nice combination because Astral Cornucopia, you can get that all stacked up and then get a whole bunch of mana from that. Then you could tap it and cast Everflowing Chalice for a multi kicker and just put a whole bunch of counters on that, and they both get counters every time. Um, really, they get out of hand very, very quickly. Next up is Blood Money. Okay, destroy all creatures for each non token creature destroyed this way. You create a tap treasure token. So this is expensive. It is seven. It's not cheap, this board wipe, right? Seven mana is not cheap, but it does not hit Planeswalkers. And it's going to wipe out all creatures on the board, which is a win for you, a Planeswalker deck. And you're just going to get a pile of treasure on top of it. Like, seven's a lot, but it's not a lot if you basically get a refund in treasures, right? So if there's even like four creatures on the board, 
non-token creatures on the board. Um, it's already effectively a casting cost of three for the board wipe. Um, that's, uh, that's crazy. Nissa World Waker. Uh, I think I mentioned this already. Uh, yeah, that's right, with Evolution Sage. So, three green green, starting loyalty three. Her plus one, aka plus two, because of Karth. Target land you control becomes a 4 4 elemental creature with trample, it's still a land. You know, if someone else's defenses are down, this might be an option. In general, I would not really want to do that. Um, or plus one, untap up to four target forests. Again, this is going to be plus two, just untap a whole bunch of mana. That's what you want this for, right? This is the option you want. And then the ultimate, um, oh boy, the ultimate, the ultimate. Uh, minus seven, minus six. Okay, so once again, two activations, even if it's only Karth and her, and there's no proliferate, two activations, and then she can ultimate already without taking out the Planeswalker. Search your library for any number of basic land cards. Put them onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. Those lands become four, four elemental creatures. With trample, they're still lands. Okay, so this is gonna pull all of the, uh, all of the ba -ba -ba basic lands out of your deck and throw them straight in. So if you have Evolution Sage, or if you have any kind of like land trigger, uh, even if you don't, hey, it's mana, right? Or you can use them as creatures to just attack. Sure. Can we're gonna have lots of like emblems as well, like plus three, plus three, adding trample. These already have trample, so it doesn't matter. But also things like indestructible we can get. Um, so as soon as you've got one of those emblems, using this becomes just like crazy. Not quite win con, but pretty close. Proliferate. Evolution Sage, we already talked about. Carnivorous Canopy, okay. Removal is super important in uh, Super Friends decks, right? Planeswalker decks, removal is super important because you're gonna need to keep worrying about defending those and making sure they don't get taken out too quick quickly. People probably aren't gonna want to take them out because you're just gonna go search out another one right away. So that's one nice thing about Karth that it's almost like a punishment for like taking out your Planeswalker. You're just gonna go get another one. Anywho, destroy target artifact, enchantment, or creature with flying. Three options. Okay, it does cost three mana, but we're not done yet. If that permanent mana value is three or less, proliferate. So we're, oh, we can also just proliferate as well, if it's three or less. Especially if you're using this on an, an artifact or something, you can take out a lot of artifacts that are going to have that mana value of three or less. Especially ones that are kind of a pain in the butt. Well, you'll probably be able to take them out and be like, okay, now I proliferate and now I'm ready to like, you know, alt on a planeswalker or something. So it's going to be a real salt in the wounds kind of thing that I always like to see. Contagion class, two mana artifact. And when it enters the battlefield, you put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature. Once again, you can proliferate other people's stuff too, right? So that minus one, minus one counter, proliferate, proliferate, proliferate until it's gone, right? Or maybe just make it super weak and leave it there. If uh, if it did, can't do anything, it might be safer to just like make it really weak and then uh, stop proliferating and just like leave it as like a zero one or something. A pay four and tap proliferate. As many proliferate options, four is a lot, but maybe you need it at that time. Maybe it's going to be worth it. Plain wide celebration. This is another very expensive mana card. Um, five green green, so seven again. Choose four, you may choose the same mode more than once. Okay, create a two two citizen token. Eh, it's all colors, don't care. Return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. Recursion is a very good option here, but the one I really want it for is this next one, proliferate. Seven mana is a lot. Proliferating four times? That's insane. That's, uh... Most, if you've just cast some Planeswalkers the turn before, people might not expect very much from them, and then you're going to cast this card, and they're, like, probably largely going to be able to just set their alts off without, like, 
having to sacrifice or anything. Um, so they're just all going to like activate their big scary ability right away. Um, seven mana is a lot, but you're going to get a lot more than seven mana value out of that. And finally, you gain four life. So you could gain, uh, what, 16 life. Maybe that might be a good option, particularly if you're doing uh, Command the Dread Horde. You might want that extra life just to make sure you can purchase everything and stay in the game. Or not purchase, but pay the life cost for everything and then stay in the game. Karn's Bastion. Again, you can tap it to add a colorless or pay four and tap to proliferate. Pay four on a land is pay five, right? But yeah, still it's an option. You want the option there. It's not like your number one, your plan A, B, or C, but it's there when you really need it. If you need to like, you want to alt, but you don't want to like sacrifice that planeswalker because you need one more, there it is, right? Planeswalkers? Okay, Jiang Yanggu, I'm saying it very Korean. I don't know if I should. Wildcrafter, Jiang? Yeah, I feel like that's right. Each creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter on it has tap to add one mana of any color. So we do have ways to just put plus one, plus one counters on all of your creatures. So if he's out, hey, great. Um, all of your creatures are now mana dorks. Just the whole board. Especially wait until it's like right about to be your turn and then tap down all of them and uh yeah as long as the previous player or the player before you has had combat already you're safe you can just tap down everything and then like start casting instants and go crazy right even if you have a uh, if you have one of the what I, vivian the vivian that gives everything flash you're going to be able to use this to just like cast like your whole hand um you're pretty much just unstoppable at that point. But anyway, his minus one, which is a zero. Remember, minus one is zero with Karth. Put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. So what you can do is just keep throwing plus one, plus one counters on creatures. And Jiang is never going to run out of uh, loyalty points. It's not going to affect his loyalty points at all. In fact, he's probably going to keep gaining them because of proliferate. So that's a nice little trick there. Garrick, we've already talked about. Again, his minus six, he starts the five, right? So even if you, uh, proliferating twice is probably the way to go. Um, and then you can get that emblem right away. That plus three, plus three and trample for all of your creatures. Remember, emblems are great because you, no one can mess with them, really. They're just there. Once they're there, it's done. You can't like counter spell. They can counter the ability when the ability is cast. Once the emblem's there, it's done. It's over. That's just happening for the rest of the game. Vivian Reed. Okay, so three green green. Five starting loyalty. So a plus one look the top four cards of your library. Oh my. You may reveal a creature or a land card from among them and put them into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in random order. This is really important because you are going. To, you want to have creatures to keep like playing for defense and all of their functionality. So this is going to get land if you're missing a land drop. This is going to get creature if you need uh, something to defend your planeswalkers. Really super useful. Okay, we're going to skip. Okay, destroy target artifact, enchantment, or creature with flying for minus three, aka minus two. Again, she can do that usually. She can only do that once because your commander is going to be able to do it twice right away. And even if she didn't do anything else, she would still be on the board and you can still like proliferate or use her plus ability. Minus eight, minus seven. You get an emblem with creatures you control, get plus two, plus two, and have Vigilance, Trample, and Indestructible. All of your creatures, creature tokens, whatever, Indestructible, and Trample, and Vigilance. So you're just attacking nonstop every turn, and uh, I guess they can exile your board, that's about it. Um, even you can cast these, you know, 
things like blood money that are going to destroy all creatures and you don't even have to worry about it. It won't affect your stuff. You're fine. Um, whew. That minus eight, again, usually super hard to get to. She starts with five and it's plus one, plus one, plus one. This is even if you weren't proliferating two times and you can activate it already and she's going to stay alive. Um, whew. Okay, another Vivian. Vivian, Champion of the Wild. Again, we basically want this for the... You may cast creature spells as though they had flash. So again, if you got Jian Yanggu, as soon as you have this Vivian, you can use uh, tap down your creatures to just cast more creatures, right? And then at the start of your turn, you untap and they're not summoning sick. You're just good to go. Plus one, aka plus two, uh, until your next end step, target, one target creature gains vigilance and reach. Anti-flyer, nice to have. Minus two, minus one. Look at the top three cards of your library, exile one of them face down, put the rest of them on your library in any order. For as long as it remains exiled, you may look at the card and you may cast it as though, uh, if it's a, sorry, you may cast if it's a creature spell. So you can cast it, but only if it's a creature spell. Still quite nice, right? Being able to search out things. Uh, and just keep the creatures coming is what Vivian's all about. Garrick. Okay, we got... I think there's five Garricks in here. So again, that that thing where they make wolves, that when they died, they put a loyalty counter on Garricks. We're getting a maximum value out of that. Plus one, aka plus two. Up to one target creature gets plus three, plus three, and gains trample until end of turn. Eh. It's not bad. Plus three, so respectable. If you're doing, going for commander damage or something, this might be very useful, right? Um, 21 is commander damage, so there's still a long way away. Even Karth starts with three attack, so that gets him up to six. You don't want to only rely on that, right? You don't want to have to get four attacks through with Karth to get your commander damage. But anywho, minus two, create a three, three beast creature token. Then if an opponent controls more creatures than you, Put a loyalty counter on Garrick unleashed. So he's it's gonna be minus one instead of minus two. And if someone else has more creatures than you, as soon as that comes in, he gets a loyalty counter. So it's basically a zero ability as long as like someone else controls more creatures. Like if you're playing against a token deck or something, hey, no problem. Um, I guess this is a bit of a token deck, but not really. Um, minus seven, minus six. You get an ambush with, at the beginning of your end step, you may search a library for a creature card, put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. Just any creature, straight into the battlefield. This is like a tutor cast automatically emblem. Once again, once the emblem's there, that's it. It's there for the game. So you're just gonna be like, what creature do I want? Throw it in. What creature do I want? Throw it in. First choice, Agent Frank Corrigan, that's for sure. He uses his ultimate, automatically proliferates. So yeah, assuming he doesn't get taken out by using his ultimate, he's gonna get two loyalty counters back immediately and only costs minus six instead of minus seven. So uh, him going ultimate, you know, two rounds in a row, not really unlikely as long as you're doing one of those creatures that, well, not, not even necessarily, but if you're doing those creatures that like proliferate when they enter, uh, makes it even easier. It's also great for things like if you want uh, Evolution Sage or something like that. Go get Evolution Sage and that way you're set up for your Nessa ultimate and things like that. So this is really setting up. You got to know your creature so you know what to get in what circumstance, right? Win cons. Okay, win con number one. As usual, Commander Damage. Karth the Lion. Okay, he is... Uh, I already went over him. 3, 5. Again, commander damage is 21. That's a ways away from 3, right? Okay, but we're going to have plus 1, plus 1 counters. So he can get big quick, right? Get 1, plus 1, plus 1 counter and just start proliferating. And uh, he's not going to go up to 21 right away. I'm not going to be ridiculous. But especially with Jiang Yanggu, his minus 5, mi minus 4... Until end of turn, target creature gains trample and plus X plus X, where X is the number of lands you control. 
So if you've used your Nessa World Awaker uh, Ultimate and then this, that's your uh, maybe a, a few plus one plus ones, but I think, what did I say, 16, 17 lands? He can be up to like 20, 19, 20 attack power just off of that. It is only for one turn, but you only take one turn to uh, remove someone from the game, right? So if he has like two plus one plus one counters and uh, Nissa's used her ultimate and Jiang is going to use his, hey, boom, done. And the last thing you need is to hit Rogue's Passage. So again, pay four, tap, target creature can't be blocked this turn. So you're just going to make him unblockable and just take a player out of the game. Whoever the biggest threat is, take him out, done. All right. And then you can run away with the game, no problem. Win con number two, token combat. All right, here. Okay, sorry about that. I need a little break there. I have to turn off the air conditioning and it's still summer in Korea, so it gets really hot really fast. Um, but I'm all good again. Okay, so win con number two, token combat. Again, this is another one of my cards that I put in like every green deck. Uh, Champion of Lamholt, one green green for a one one. Sounds bad. Keep reading. Uh, creatures with power less than Champion of Lam po Lamholt's power can't block creatures you control. She's a one one, so that sounds once again pointless. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on Champion of Lamholt. Another creature enters. Not you cast a creature spell, just any creature entering. All those tokens, creatures that Garrick and all of the Planeswalkers make, that those will count. Those will trigger this, and uh, it will very quickly make her uh, everything unblockable, basically. Um, between the proliferate and uh, the plus one plus one counters just from like creatures entering, um, very quickly you're just gonna have a whole board where no one's allowed to block you. So you can just take people out of the game automatically. Um, it's a great little ability, particularly in decks with proliferate. Anyway, Garrick, Curse Huntsman. We talked about him already, but yeah, six for a five starting loyalty, and that zero ability is just very, very good, especially when it's plus one and it's making two wolves. Then you can he's legendary. So again, you can use like Peregrine Dynamo and make that into four two two wolves being created every time he activates it. That's a lot. Uh, especially with pretty much any kind of emblem down that is a boost to your creatures, then uh, yeah, hey, if they're like two two wolves with uh, plus one plus one and plus three plus three and indestructible and trample and vigilance and reach and whatever else, oh my. Vivian Ma Monsters Advocate, three green green for a three starting loyalty. You may look at the top card of your library at any time. You may cast creature spells from the top of your library. Once again, getting those creatures out. I know there's a lot more emphasis on uh, creatures than Planeswalkers, which may sound weird for a Super Friends deck, but Karth's ability is just going to keep getting you those Planeswalkers, right? So that's kind of sorted already. So what I went more with was uh, the... Uh, going for yeah the creatures because hey we need that support for the planeswalkers is what we're going to focus on instead and in weight plus one create a three three beast creature token put your next choice of vigilance reach or trample counter on it so it's going to be making these beasts three three is not bad especially it's vigilance reach or trample right so you've got options there, especially, I think the number one for me would be reach. Um, of course, if there's no flyers, then maybe you don't have to worry about that, but still, whatever. And minus two, minus one. Uh, when you cast your next creature spell this turn, search your library for a creature card with lesser converted mana cost, put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. What? Um, again, Cast Agent Frank Horrigan, and uh, he's seven mana. So just go get any creature from your library and just throw it straight into the battlefield. Again, you're gonna be proliferating, so every time you proliferate, you can do this again without her losing anything. Even if she doesn't, if you don't have proliferate and you don't use her plus at all, you can do this three times before she's gone. Um, 
really crazy. That's not really token combat, I guess, but the 3-3 uh, three, three beast is the token combat part. When con number three, infect. I said there's a little bit of infect. I kind of just like threw a dash of infect in there, you know, for flavor. Anyway, um, for two and a green, or sorry, two and a black. My brain is already not working because of the heat. It's an instant. Each opponent sacrifices a creature. Sacrifice is nice because it gets around things like indestructible. It's not good because they're going to choose. If they have one big, scary, indestructible creature, and you cast this, then hey, great. Especially like after a board wipe, someone's going to maybe have that one indestructible creature and you go, okay, now get rid of that. This is a really great follow-up to a board wipe, I think. And, uh, sorry, each opponent gets a poison counter. Okay, this is only one, so you're going to have to proliferate nine times. That sounds like a lot. It does. Keep in mind, Agent Frank Horrigan, he enters, there's two, he attacks, becomes indestructible, and two more. So in the first two turns, Agent Frank Horrigan's in there, that's already four times. You only need five more then. Five more is not going to be super difficult, okay? It's not gonna be like an impossibility kind of thing. Really not even very difficult. Anywho, okay, and finally, Evolution Sage. Once again, yeah, proliferating just on, on landfall proliferate, basically. You, you've got like Nissa World Waker. Again, Duvraska's Fall, Nissa World Waker Ultimate with Evolution Sage out. Game over. Done. You win. Whew, me, me. Oh, sorry, I didn't read the other one. Infectious Inquiry is two and a black for a sorcery. So this is kind of like another option. These don't really need, need to work together, but you draw two cards and lose two life. Each opponent gets a poison counter. A nice little bit of card draw, it costs you two life. But yeah, again, gets getting that first counter down is what's really important. And then you can proliferate. As long as you have something to proliferate, this uh, gets done quickly. Win con number four, Dread Horde. Okay, Command the Dread Horde. This is four black black for a sorcery. Choose any number of target creature and or planeswalker cards in graveyards, including yours and anyone else's. Command the Dread Horde deals damage to you equal to the total converted mana cost of those cards. Put them onto the battlefield under your control. So you're gonna choose that's very important, you choose. It doesn't just like automatically take all of them because that might be too much converted mana cost for your life total, right? But we do want to keep boosting up our life total to be able to like just basically stay in the game after casting this, right? We don't want this to wipe us out. This will be like you take control of the board and can probably take on your next turn, just take someone out. If not win the game. Obnixilis of the Black Oath. Okay, three black black for a starting mana or starting loyalty three. E, uh, for his plus two, aka plus three. Each opponent loses one life. You gain life equal to life lost this way. Sure. His minus two, aka minus one. Cre uh, create a five five black demon creature token with flying. You lose two life. A five five flyer. That is not bad. Minus eight, minus seven. Uh, you get an emblem with one and a black sacrifice creature. You gain X life and draw X cards where X is the sacrifice creature's power. This is where those tokens and emblems and all the plus ones you're gonna be able to keep throwing on things get out of hand. Cause your, uh, your creatures are gonna get like all kinds of bonuses from all over. So even that two, two token can turn into a six, six or even higher very quickly. So sacrifice that and uh, yeah, you're gonna gain that much life. If it's six, six, six life, draw six cards. For two mana, not bad. And Nissa, Voice of Zendikar. So one green, green for three, or three starting loyalty. Plus one, plus two. Put a zero, one uh, green plant creature token onto the battlefield. 
Put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control for minus two. Much minus one, remember, much better. And minus seven, minus six. Gain X life and draw X cards where X is the number of lands you control. That's gonna, especially with the other Nissa, Nissa World Waker, that's just going to be so many cards and so much life that you're probably gonna to have to discard, unfortunately, but you're gonna get just the, like whatever you need, you're gonna have it. All right, so part three, combos and tactics. Really what I use this for is talking about the sub themes in the deck. We're also gonna go over some other important points. Planeswalker combos, again, Nessa the World Waker is going to pull all of your basic lands out and make them into like creatures basically. And uh, Jiang Yang Gu, again, is going to give everything plus X plus X equal to the number of lands you have. Or not everything plus X, one creature plus X plus X equal to the number of lands you have. This turns your commander into kind of a win con machine pretty quickly. And Nissa, voice of Zendikar. Once again, the minus seven, I was just talking about her. Gain X life, draw X cards, where X is the number of lands you control. So yeah, basically she's going to just let you draw all of these cards and gain a bunch of life. And then you're going to like, probably have to discard, but you're gonna be able to keep whatever you want, which is probably whatever you need. So yeah, oh, just uh, quite a spicy little combo. There's actually a whole bunch of these combos in this deck. I don't have time to go over all of them without making like a five hour video, which no one would watch. More proliferate. Okay, we already talked about proliferate, but we're not done. Okay, unnatural respiration. This is also um, going to return something from your graveyard to your hand. So it's recursion and then proliferate, right? So return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand, proliferate for one and a green. Nice little sorcery. Smell fear, also wonder green sorcery. Proliferate first, and then target creature you control fights up to one target creature you don't control. The proliferate is first because that counter is gonna go, you're gonna give it plus one, plus one, and then it's gonna fight something, right? Remember, when they fight, they exchange damage. It's not just doing damage to the thing. So yeah, um, that uh, basically removal. Uh, removal with a bunch of extra steps and proliferate. Uh, poof. Recon Craft Theta. Uh, I, th I love the name. Also the art, but yeah. And anyway, we four for a vehicle. Unlike most vehicles, you do not have to crew this. This does not require crewing. Oh, sorry, it does. It's crew two. Um, I, I missed that somehow every time I was looking at this card. I was actually like, where's the crew thing? Oh, I guess that doesn't have it. Um, but yeah, it does have crew too. Oh, I'm the worst. Okay. It's a 4-4 four, four flyer. Not bad already to start with. And when it enters the battlefield, create a 0-0 zero, zero blue alien creature token. Put a plus one, plus one counter on it. And when it attacks, proliferate. So you're going to make a token as well, which is nice. And then every time this attacks, it's going to automatically proliferate. One proliferate trigger per turn is not a lot, but it's like, also you're gonna be doing so much that's probably gonna fly under the radar, no pun intended. And um, there, people are probably not gonna be worried about this versus all of your other proliferate triggers. So this is something that you're probably gonna be able to set off numerous times. And only once per turn is pretty good. Again, if you have Frank Horrigan for two turns, that's gonna be four, and this is gonna give you two more, right? So that's already at six. Um, if you're going for an infect wing, six, they've already got one. Remember they start with one, six more, they're already at seven, right? That's getting real close to just like take them out of the game. You don't need a whole lot more proliferate on top of that. Canker Bloom, okay, for one or green, it's a three, two. You pay one to sacrifice it. Again, we've got lots of recursion, don't worry about sacrificing. Destroy target artifact, destroy target enchantment, or proliferate. This is really just like a get things done card in this deck. And remember, like I just said, sacrificing not a big deal when you're probably gonna be able to just like pull it back out of your graveyard whenever you want. Magistrate Scepter, this does not proliferate. This is something you target with proliferate. This is like 
may be the best card to use proliferate on in the game i think it is three mana and this is a budget card i don't get why this is a budget card but anyway three mana for an artifact you do have to pay for the first time so it's a little steep four and tap put a charge counter on magistrate scepter once it has one charge counter remember you're just going to proliferate those charge counters don't keep paying four proliferate and then after that you can tap it remove three charge counters from magistrate scepter take an extra turn after this one you're going to be able to proliferate more than three times a turn pretty easy like i just said frank horrigan recon craft theta that's going to be three already so if you have those two out and you got a uh, magistrate scepter you're just going to have infinite turns infinite turns um so they can like flip the table i guess or give up uh it's kind of like a almost a win con i think but anyway planeswalkers defense right one defender planeswalkers palazzo arches we already talked about cunning rhetoric okay two and a black this is enchantment whenever an opponent attacks you and or a planeswalker you control exile the top card of that player's library you may cast it for as long as it remains exiled um and men of any type can be spent to cast it so this doesn't even have to stay on the battlefield for you to be able to keep casting those exiled cards right as long as it's exiled you have access to it um this is actually, I think, a better... A lot of people think that, like, Pillow Fort or something like that is better. Uh, it's not. It just isn't. Like, paying two mana to attack with a creature, that's a headache. Losing your cards to someone else and you don't even know what card it's going to be, that's real scary. Okay? That's much more of a, like, if someone sees that they're going to have to, like, start handing... Basically giving you their cards if they attack you, um... That's when they're going to say, yeah, I'll attack someone else instead. I think this is way better. Anyway, Liliana's Talent. We talked about this already as well. But yeah, not going to want to attack you. Your Planeswalkers with a... Uh, or your Planeswalker that's enchanted with um, any creatures. If those creatures are just basically going to get blown up immediately. Settle the score. Okay, so this is a two black black exile target creature. Exile. First of all, one reason why it's awesome is four, so it's pricey, but put two loyalty counters on a planeswalker you control. Two. Two extra. Oh boy. That is going to like swing you into like ultimate territory a lot of the time. Even if you've you know used their plus one that's become plus two, and then you do this and throw those two loyalty counters, you're probably set up to like be able to do the ultimate on the next turn. Or I guess you probably want to use this on the same turn. Oh no, I think I hear my son. Uh-oh. Kaya's Ghost Form. Uh, one black for an enchantment aura, and it can enchant a creature or a planeswalker. Uh, when enchanted permanent dies or is put into exile, return that creature to the battlefield under your control. So this is really sneaky good, because even if it's something that's put into exile, you're just going to put it straight back into the battlefield. Um, usually exile is like the safe thing, right? This is like, nope, I'm going to ignore exile. We're going to just go straight back to the battlefield. Um, crazy, crazy good, right? There's uh, a lot of uh, a lot of your planeswalkers you're going to want to use this on because it's going to just like not only return them to the battlefield but it'll make attacking them kind of pointless people want them to actually get off of the board if they just return them to the battlefield you might end up with higher loyalty if you use loyalty abilities and drain them out um that might actually like refresh them that can be more useful for you they don't want to do that Tokens. Okay, Oath of Liliana. When it enters the battlefield, each opponent sacrifices a creature. Already, two and a black for an ench legendary enchantment? That's worth it already, I think. Right? That ability is worth three. At the beginning of each end step, if a planeswalker enters the battlefield under your control, probably going to be almost every turn. Um, 
Put a 2 2 black zombie creature token onto the battlefield. 1 2 2 zombie is not impressive. This is really. I put this in here with the emblems and things like that in mind. If you've got emblems going, that is going to be like possibly, you know, like a 5 5 trample creature, maybe with a bunch of other abilities too. It'll get out of hand fast. That's all I'm saying. Garrick, once again, making those walls. Recon Craft Theta, when it enters, it is going to make that one, uh, uh, one blue alien creature token with a plus one plus one, which, which is a great target for your proliferate. You're just going to keep making that bigger and bigger. Garrick Primal Hunter. So he's going to, for his plus one, plus two, put a 3-3 three, three B, uh, Green Beast creature token onto the battlefield, or minus three. Again, minus two. Draw cards equal to the greatest power among creatures you control. Once again, as soon as you cast this, you can do this minus thing. Draw a bunch of cards and he'll still be on the battlefield because he's only minus two. Minus six, minus five. Put a six, six green worm creature token onto the battlefield for each land you control. Each land. Once again, that each land thing. Nissa World Waker. Love seeing that. Um, He's real scary with a, that ultimate is gonna, even if you set off only once, it might get the job done. Free Elise, Lana Wars Fury. Her plus two, uh, plus three, is uh, create a one, one green uh, elf druid creature token with tap to add a green. You're just pumping out mana dorks. Also, she is legendary, so if you want, you can use Peregrine Dynamo and double that and make two of those every time, right? Um, why not? So yeah. Also has a card draw option on and a removal option. Just everything. Plus one, plus one counters. Just because of the amount of proliferate I want this in there, it is going to, like, Tokens and plus one plus one counters are also a nice mix, especially with proliferate, just out of hand. Jung Yanggu, we talked about already. Just make everything mana dorks. Vraska Regal Gorgon. Okay, five black green for a starting loyalty of five. And uh, yeah, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. That creature gains menace until end of turn. Again, it's gonna be plus three. So that five start, you activate this twice. You're into your alt territory already. That's assuming you're not proliferating. And destroy target creature for minus two or minus nine. Uh, for each creature card in your graveyard, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. So you're gonna count your creature cards in your graveyard, even if you have like three or four. You know what, great. All of your creatures get four plus one plus one counters. Um, oof. Again, Champion of Lambholt we discussed already as well. Nesting Ground. Nesting Ground does not make plus one plus one counters. It allows you to move one. So if you cast a creature and it doesn't have your plus one plus one counter, just move, put one on it, and then proliferate it. And then you're uh, just set. You're done. Again, Nissa, Voice of Zendikar. We already talked about this one as well. So yeah, um, it, her minus two is, yeah, put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. Again, it's gonna be minus one only to put a plus one, plus one on all of your creatures whenever you want. With Jiang as well, that's just automatically making them all into mana dorks. Um, yoy. Removal. Again, super important, way more important in this deck than the normal one. Oath of Liliana. Again, force them all to sacrifice. Really great follow up to a board wipe. Serath the Viper or Fang. Again, um, <clears throat> other tap creatures you control have death touch. So, all of your token creatures attack with a bunch of them, especially when if they all get vigilance from that emblem, you're attacking with them. They don't tap with Vigilance, so that wouldn't work. That doesn't make sense, Joe. Anyway, you attack with them when they don't have Vigilance and they all just have Death Touch all of a sudden. So anything that blocks them is just out. 
and other untapped creatures you control have hexproof. So if they all get vigilance, they have hexproof as well. That's nice. And pay one and tap her untapped target creature or land you control. Can be worthwhile, definitely. That one creature, you never know, right? Casualties of War. I actually saw this on uh, EDH Rec. I'm going to try to remember to put uh, his video in there because I really liked it also. Um, yeah, he recommended this as well. So, uh, it is six mana for this removal spell. And a lot of people criticize it for being six mana for a sorcery, right? That is super expensive, I agree with you. But you can take out up to five things. Choose one or more. Destroy target artifact, target creature, target enchantment, target land, target planeswalker. Just everything. For six mana, if you even get three of them, it's two per. That is like a normal rate for a removal spell. And the fact that it's all on one card is actually better card economy. Um, this is just so underrated. It shouldn't be a budget card, I think. In Garrick's Wake, okay, this is a board wipe, so it's removal, but it's board wipe. Okay, anyway, seven black black, nine casting cost, huge. Destroy all creatures you don't control and all planeswalkers you don't control. So this is just like a I win card, right? You're just taking out everything everyone else has and then you're just gonna smash and win. Settle the score. We talked about this one again already and uh, yeah, exile target creature. Usually my removal, I wanna do enchantments and artifacts. With planeswalkers, you really want those things that deal with the creatures, especially things like indestructible and what have you. So this can do that. Recursion. Okay, Unnatural Restoration we talked about already. Again, target permanent, back to your hand, proliferate for two in a green, or one in a green, one in a green. Trail Tracker Scout, every time you use eight mana, you just take a permanent out of your graveyard and throw it back in your hand. Plain Wide Celebration. I don't know if I talked about this one yet. Five green green, pricey, right? Very pricey. Oh, I did talk about this one already, right, right, right. Again, you can uh, potentially um, put four permanent cards from your graveyard to your hand. Four. Or you can do any mix of them, right? You can do two and proliferate twice. Or just put proliferate four times is what I would recommend. Hopefully that's what you do with it. But recursion is nice. Kaya's Ghost Form. Talked about this already. Not really recursion, but it's, uh, it's going to get it back to the battlefield. So... Recursion with maybe fewer steps because it's not going to the graveyard. So it's like recursion without the graveyard and recasting step. Okay. Peerless recycling. I really like anything with uh, the uh, raccoons on it. I really like. One in a green for an instant. You can gift a card. If you can, do it, right? There's always someone that's going to be behind in a commander game. Help the person out. Be nice. That goodwill is gonna like help you out at some point. Okay. Return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. If the gift was promised, instead return two target permanent cards from your graveyard to your hand. So you can let someone else draw to turn this two mana into two permanent card recursion from your graveyard. Excuse me, oh my. I don't know why every time I'm recording, but is it my, I'm drinking tea, Earl Grey, hot. Anyway, um, it's my, uh, even I keep complaining about how, how hot it is in South Korea during summer and then I'm always drinking hot tea, um, cause I'm smart. Anyway, very, very good card as I was saying. Um, I gotta actually order some more of these I think because they're, it's not gonna stay that cheap. That's for sure. Okay, and this has been, uh, yeah, Karth the Lion, a Cat's Friends deck. So Super Friends with a guy that pretends to be a lion. Fun. Anyway, take it easy.